Hi, I'm Paul, Customer Success Manager at Apinu, and today I'm joined by Sun, who's the Head of Customer Success at SEO Booster. So thanks, Sun, for coming on. Uh, perhaps you can start by telling us a little bit about what SEO Booster does. Hi, thanks for having me today, Paul. Um, I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to be here with you today. Um, so uh, a few words about our app, SEO Booster. Um, just like Opinu, we're a Shopify-based app with an average rating of 4.8 stars on Shopify. Um, our goal is to help Shopify merchants boost their website rankings in Google search results, as well as other search engines like Bing, for example. Um, the higher your rank is, the more visible your website will become to web users, resulting in higher traffic and you know brand awareness, for example. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. I mean, I talk to merchants about conversions and traffic. So, you know, they're the two things they mention when they install a review app is like, how, how can I improve both these things? Clients often say they either have a problem with one or the other, like, oh, I'm getting the traffic, but it's not converting or I need the traffic. Um, so we need reviews to, to get people to get onto the store. Right. But actually, in, in most cases that, you know, it's a mixture of both and they can improve in both sections. So we actually because of the way that um, Opinu imports reviews from Amazon, it's quite interesting because we see a lot of brands who are moving over from Amazon to D2C or that still have a big presence on Amazon. And obviously the conversions there are boosted by showing the highest converting reviews first on Amazon. Um, so Opinu uses a similar AI called Smart Reviews, which features that. But actually when we look at um, traffic, historically Amazon has had like the lion's share of traffic because everyone just shops on Amazon. It's so easy compared to Shopify. But obviously, as I'm sure you know, in quarter two, 21, um, Shopify traffic exceeded Amazon's for the first time and growth continues to be bigger in the Shopify space. So with that in mind, the, those merchants that are, you know, trying to make the most of that traffic going to their store as an SEO app manager, how do you see merchants getting the best results? Is it through organic or paid channels or a mixture of both? Or... Uh, yeah, thank you, Paul, for that question. Um, I probably think that you already know how different between organic traffic and paid traffic is. But, um, you know, for those who don't know, I would like to help them clarify first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, organic traffic indicates those who come to you naturally using search engines like Google, for example. Um, on the other hand, paid traffic is customers who are attracted by the ad banners you set up throughout the digital space for, yeah. for example, Facebook ads, Google ads, etc. Um, <clears throat> if you ask me which one generates better leads for merchants, um, I would say these two types of traffic benefits merchants in their own ways. For example, paid traffic tends to bring you instant results. But uh, on the other hand, driving organic traffic takes more time and effort but it is more cost effective in the long run. And again, if you ask me which one I favor over the other, then the answer would be organic traffic. Achieving organic traffic is the way to sustainable e-commerce success. That's how we believe it to be. And there have been many facts and statistics that point out how organic traffic comes out on top. For example, like um, if I remember correctly, like, is up to 70 or 80% of web users ignore paid ads and focus on organic search results only. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, but I'm not saying that you should ignore paid traffic completely, but you should only see it as something that aids up your process of achieving organic one. So yeah, to sum up, you should definitely go for organic traffic. Yeah, no, that's interesting because a lot of the time when I see paid ads at the top, I, I do actually ignore it, but I totally get what you're saying. It's about making that sustainable um, growth in SEO by using both channels, I guess. But yeah, no, but when we talk about, you know, now we've learned that organic traffic is probably the most effective at driving sales over a longer period of time. What ways can merchants or what things can merchants do to, to boost that organic traffic? What would you recommend? Well, well, in terms of, you know, achieving organic traffic, you, we have to talk about SEO marketing. That is like pretty much the only way. Um, but uh, in terms of SEO marketing, there is no short of ways merchants can use to achieve it. You know, SEO means, you know, like there's a lot, there's a lot about it. For example, you can build backlinks to improve your domain authority, mm -hmm. promote your business on social media networks by working with key influencers or maybe perform on-page optimization for your website. And, you know, I would like to dig in deeper for 
into the on-page optimization because that is like the very one of the very first thing that you need to do when it comes to SEO marketing. You know, by on-page optimization, I mean to optimize your website elements like images, adding tags, and URLs. Google treats these elements as working factors. So if you have them well optimized, there's a high chance that your website will be ranked higher in the search results, resulting in higher traffic. And yeah, this is what our app SEO Booster aims to help you achieve. Okay, so it's like a suite that just optimizes everything while that's on your page. I, I get it, yeah. Um, and from my point of view then, coming from a reviews background, are there any ways, well, I know there are, but what, what ways would you recommend merchants use their reviews to boost their traffic? Wow, again, a lovely question, Paul. Um, in terms of traffic, yes, indeed. Traffic is a great way to, you know, like to boost your traffic. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, reviews is a great mm -hmm. way to put your traffic. And uh, I would say there are at least like yeah, three, three things that you need to do with reviews if you want to use it to improve your traffic. Uh, the first one is, yeah, you have to collect as many positive reviews as possible. This is obvious, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, you see that Google Trust reviews and if you pay a closer look to the search results, Google often shows businesses with high volumes of quality reviews first. It's all meant to offer users the best experience possible from the start to the finish. And <clears throat> the next thing you need to do is uh, once you've got your reviews right, you should display them on your website as well as Google search results. You know, um, collecting reviews and uh, installing rich snippets on your website can help you do this. Um, your reviews and ratings will then appear in the search result. Uh, and this means that like any reviews you have collected so far will show up as golden stars underneath your listing and positive reviews have you improve your brand trust, which often leads to a higher CTR than your rivals. And since Google sees the CTR as a ranking factor as well, the higher your CTR is, the more likely you are to be ranked at a better position in the result. And yeah, lastly, the last thing you need to do is to respond to your reviews. Like um, you need to understand that yeah. not all the time we get good reviews, right? Sometimes we have bad reviews as well. So um, uh, responding to reviews can also help you like improve your page content. It's a known fact that Google itself has been encouraging merchants to respond to customer reviews. Doing so can benefit your SEO effort in multiple ways, yeah, as I mentioned before more keywords and content for Google to crawl. And you're seen to be regularly interacting with your customers, which could 100%. signal a fresh and frequently updated website. Um, and lastly, yeah, responding to reviews successfully may, you know, help uh, you change a bad review and, you know, convert a bad review into a good one, actually. And yeah, last I would like to say is, um, oh yeah. Uh, I read, I once read that statistics show that like around 105% of visitors are more likely to make a purchase on your site if reviews are present. So yeah, to sum up, reviews increase both consumer knowledge and branches and thus people are likely to spend more time browsing your site and be convinced enough to convert. So resulting in, you know, lower bounce rate as well. Yeah, there's a there's a lot to digest there, but like we're singing off the same hymn sheet there, definitely. Like one of the things that I say is for customers in terms of like an effective conversion strategy is to make sure that you're replying to reviews, which you're coming from. It's interesting because you're coming from a from an SEO point of view, saying that you know making sure that you know you you get more keywords in there, and and Google recognizes that you're interacting with your customers and therefore ranking you higher, but. From my point of view, I think with reviews, the number one factor is the conversions. Obviously, SEO is important as we're discussing, but in terms of making sure that you're replying to negative reviews or all reviews, but negative reviews, most importantly, instead of just hiding them, which D2C has a bit of a problem. Uh, people don't trust them. So if you're hiding your bad reviews, then you're actually hindering not only your SEO, as you've said, but your conversions because customers, when they go on your site, I don't know if you're the same as me, but when you look at reviews, do you look at the bad ones first? Because I do. Do you, well, look, do you look at the bad ones? I, I know I do. I always look for like one and two star to see what's gone wrong. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. Thing, yeah. Yeah, so what you want to do there is not just have a one star review so that 
someone a customer's mind can go oh well, what went wrong there if you reply to it you're actually saying hey i'm engaged with this customer exactly as you said i'm engaged with this customer and we offer a good level of service things do go wrong you know as in any business but we want to make sure we look after our customers and that's really strong not just for that one customer you've replied to because that's like a really small part of it but as you said it's for future customers that are coming to your store they can see you know if a customer's thinking what problems might i have with this product or brand and they go one star two star reviews they've replied to it that they're, they're engaged with their customers it looks really good and then the other thing if i can just say with um conversions is like we said earlier featuring the best converting reviews first on the first page so i i would say like a really if i give you like a really good example of one of our merchants um is dog dogs lounge really good uk uh, pet supplement brand so they have like I get all my stuff from them, but they have this one particular product, which I really like the reviews on, which is like um, kidney and function, kidney function um, supplements for like dogs who like, you know, wee themselves for whatever reason. And you can imagine as a customer, if your dog is like wetting themselves, it must be so stressful. You know, you've got to clean the carpet, the poor dog's suffering. You've got to constantly, you know, be looking after this dog. So they are these customers are out there looking for a solution to that problem if they go onto a site and it just says you know for this product that's meant to fix this problem and it just says five stars great product fast delivery that's not a high converting review if you have a, a review on there that says i had this problem with my dog it was really stressing the family out you know we we didn't really know how to deal with it we tried a few things before we then tried this product and it within sort of two weeks this is this has stopped and no more accidents that is a, a review that is going to convert a customer quickly it's like creating that light bulb moment like creating that emotion between the customer and um and the product or or the emotion between a relationship between the customer and the previous customer because obviously it's validation from them to say this worked for me so you go okay well i'm i'm happy to try that then and then it's that click and add to add to basket so really really strong Best reviews are the ones that um, tell a story, definitely. Yeah, the more detailed they are, the better, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that's a great story you have there, Paul. Um, so could you share with me, like, what are the best way to collect reviews from merchants? I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, from, like, customers, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so th there's a couple of things. I mean, I could talk for ages about this because there's so many ways to optimize a collection flow. But when we talk about like a basic automated review collection and, and best practices, uh, the first thing I would always say is get the timing right as best as you can. Um, so you want to request a review when the emotion is highest from your customer. So it's important to make sure that, of course, you're not sending out review requests before they've even received their product. Um, but say if your delivery times are like, three to seven days if you're sending that review on the seventh day it doesn't allow time for any delays in in shipping but more importantly i would say it depending on the product it doesn't allow time to build emotion but of course th this depends on what product you're selling and, and your customers because say for example if you're selling chocolate I would imagine most of the time that if someone's ordered a, a bit of chocolate, I know, well, I'm a chocoholic, so I would open it and I would eat it straight away. So therefore, in that instance, the emotion is going to be highest as soon as the package arrives. So you'd want to be soliciting or requesting a review at that time. If it's like, um, let's think of something, um, like a set of weights or some, something that you may not use or an exercise bike or some, something silly like that, something that you may, you're not going to use as soon as you open it. You don't want to be requesting a review before they've set it up and use it for the first time. So you may want to delay it like three, four or five days after your usual delivery purchase because you want the emotion to be high. So you want them to have used it and gone, yeah, this is great. And then if they get that message, say, hey, how did you get on with the products? Leave us a review. That's great. But you've got to be very careful as well that the emotion hasn't waned. So if you leave it 14, 15 days, which I see some people do because they're so terrified of, you know, requesting a review before the products arrive, people will have forgotten about that or they they would have integrated it into their lives and so they're less likely to to leave you a review. So another thing you can do is is send out review reminders if your review app does that. I know Opinu does. Um, but you know, just because they haven't replied to that first one, it doesn't mean that they don't want to. If they're anything like me, I've got thousands of unread emails. Um, I think a lot of people have these days, you know, from from 
companies and things like that. So yeah, just to send out a reminder is really, really strong. Um, and then I guess the, the final thing in, in collecting reviews of effectively, if I bring it back to a pin you, would be that if you are selling on other platforms like Amazon, like a lot of our customers are, um, having the ability to like import all those into your Shopify and sync it going forward. So, you know, if someone leaves, if someone buys something from your Amazon store, and then leaves a review on Amazon, we'll show that review in Shopify as well. So that's really strong. That's something that Opinion does. Right. So we've discussed how both of our apps help with traffic and conversions. So from a more technical point of view, how do you set up or how would merchants set up to configure both of our apps together? Now, I know it's pretty simple, but I know you're probably better at this than, than I would be. So, Yeah, um, it's actually pretty easy, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, I've asked, I've consulted with my technical team about this, and they say that all you will need to do is to have both of the apps installed, and then SEO Booster will automatically recognize OpenU as the review, review provider. And this means that all the data that merchants have set up with SEO Booster about you know, SEO marketing should then be collected by OpenU and be put to work later. It means that all the stuff like we have mentioned before, like stars on Google Shopping, Google Search, mm -hmm stars on Google Maps even, and will be shown, will be delivered by OpenU onto the search result. So it doesn't, and, um, the customer doesn't need to set up those things manually. You know, once the yeah, app's detected, definitely. it's all done. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah it's all done automatically. Yes. Um, actually, there is like this one more thing that I would like to mention. It's like an exclusive benefit for users who install both OpenU and SEO Booster. Um, it's not available for now, but it's coming up in our next update. Uh, it is the, you know, the integration between the review section of OpenU and SEO Booster AMP pages. And, you know, I would like to dig in a little bit deeper about the our AMP features. For your information, AMP stands for Accelerated Mobile Page. It's like a, a framework developed by Google that aims to improve website performance on mobile devices. So, um, technically, this is how it works. When integrated into a website, it will create a customizable alternative version of the web pages. And these alternate pages result, uh, I mean, sorry, they load faster on mobile devices. And so when mobile users come across your web pages on the search results and they like they click onto the links to the pages, they will then be redirected to these AMP pages instead since they load faster on mobile. So um, the, the exclusive benefit here that is that the customer of both SEO Booster and OpenU can enjoy more freedom over customizing the AMP page design. Specifically, the review section created by OpenU can be you know, like integrated into the AMP pages created by us. This would ensure both high-speed performance and customer experience while browsing the site. Yeah, no, that, that's a really good one. I've never really noticed that um, before, but that's obviously becoming more important, especially as people shop more and more on mobile. So thanks for that exclusive. And thanks for coming on and, and chatting. Um, if you do want to integrate um, your opinion with um, SEO Boost, you can do so by either reaching out to our support team, or you can go on to either of the dashboards of our apps and then just click it from there. Um, I didn't realize how much more powerful you would say organic traffic is for converting sales. In my head, I was always thinking, oh, paid ads going to get it straight away. But yeah, I can see why an organic strategy is really important long term. Um, but before we close off, I just want to give you a few minutes um, to recommend SEO Booster to our merchants, you know, so sell it as best as you. I mean, to be honest, I'm sold from what you've said already. But if you can like give us a small pitch as to why people should use it, that'd be great. Yeah, thank you, Paul, for this opportunity. Uh, yeah, I would definitely, uh, I would love to do so. To start off, and um, when we first created SEO Booster, we aim to build an all-in-one SEO app, something that would help you optimize your website for higher search engine ranking and to drive more traffic to your site. And so, yeah, we're in the pro process of doing so, and we have made, we have achieved some, yeah, a few so far. For now, the app brings an easy to understand experience for newbies without much technical knowledge. You will, you should find all fundamental SEO features for your Shopify store with a user friendly interface and in depth guide. And I can probably say that um, what makes SEO Booster unique is the fact that it's designed for everyone from beginners to advanced users. 
Therefore, if you're all new to this stuff, uh, our tool will help you become more confident in your ability to manage your SEO campaign effectively. And let, now let's dig in about uh, what kind of features our app can provide to you. Um, first off, you can have your website fully scanned with all existing SEO issues detected and a how to fix guide. Um, you can also save time and effort with SEO auto features. We all know that, you know, some SEO tasks can be, you know, can be time consuming and our app can help you automate a few of them. For example, like meta tags, IoT tags or broken links optimization, for example. Um, you can also get detailed insights into your website's SEO health with comprehensive reports, letting you know if you're on the right track or not. And lastly, we, besides of SEO, we also pay attention to, you know, your website speed performance. We also offer, you know, like uh, features that could help you boost up your speed uh, performance and enhance customer experience on your website. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we also pride ourselves on our customer support service. You know, our support team, both technical and non-technical, is always available 24-7 to walk you through every SEO step. So, yeah, again, if you're all new to this stuff, please feel no hesitation to drop us a line via the live chat channel. You're always welcome. Thanks. I think we spoke before this about you spend quite a bit on the support channel, and so do I. It's quite addictive going on there and sort of speaking to the customers, isn't it? I really enjoy doing that. But yeah, thanks so much. And we'll speak soon. All right. Thank you, Paul. Have a good day.